What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the Godzilla and how it's not an LS, but it's actually what I would consider a modern day Cleveland. So I'm back over here with my good buddy, Micah, Gaston Automotive Services in Dallas, North Carolina. And the Godzilla that's right here is actually destined to go in the blue Mustang that was in the trick flow video that had the 4.62 valve in it forever. So I've been over here just kind of looking at this Godzilla, figuring out what we've got to do and how we're going to do it. And um, we've got a game plan together, but there's some things that we need to talk about when they designed this engine, they got it right. It has often been said that the new Godzilla 7.3 engine is nothing more than a larger version of an LS engine. Well, I don't necessarily agree with that, and I'll tell you why. First, let's take a look at the LS block. Yes, of course, you can see the dry lifter valley, which is par for the course these days. You also see the forehead bolts per cylinder. Well, when you look at the Gen 3 Hemi, you see the same exact thing. A dry lifter valley with forehead bolts per cylinder. But looking at the Godzilla block a little bit closer, you see those same features, but you also see the front of the block has been extended slightly and it also has a thermostat housing incorporated into the block itself which I will talk about later. While there's no denying it the LS cylinder head is in a superb design it flows excellent and it delivers the goods but maybe they're talking about how the cylinder head itself looks as you can see the different configurations the cathedral port, the rectangle port, and even the LT stuff of later years. Well, I can also make the claim, looking back in the 1960s, that the Gurney Eagle Westlake heads that went on Fords and Mopars look pretty similar to a current LS heads. And yes, this is back in the 1960s. These cylinder heads were developed for IndyCar racing, but let's take a look at the Godzilla head. While it may look somewhat similar to an LS head, you will also notice differences right away. First with the intake ports being extended out to create a flat mating surface when the cylinder head is actually bolted on the engine, it is actually on a flat plane which is like the other modular engines of the past. While the Godzilla may share some similarities with the LS and maybe even the Hemi platform, when comparing the two engines, as you can see by the Godzilla picture here, and here's an LS, you can tell they're completely different. So now we're going to head into the part that I'm looking forward to about describing about how I think the roots lie in the Ford 351 Cleveland for this engine. The 351 Cleveland engine debuted in 1970. Ford never referred to this engine as a small block. They referred to this engine as the 335 series, which designated it as a Cleveland. But as you will see as throughout its life, the Cleveland was a powerhouse. This is the engine that David Pearson defeated Richard Petty numerous times on the super speedways of NASCAR, and then once again you can see Bob Glidden doing battle with Lee Shepard and the numerous championships that he won using Cleveland power for the win. So now let's talk about the similarities between the Cleveland and the Godzilla. But before we get to that, I want to point out the differences between the traditional small block Ford and the Cleveland itself. As you can see, the Cleveland has an extended nose on the front of the block. This allows to have a thermostat housing cast into the front of the block itself. You also notice it uses a stamp steel timing cover instead of an aluminum cover. When you look at how water flows through this block, you can see the passages through the front of the block into the thermostat housing itself. 
To me, this is the first similarity between the Cleveland and the Godzilla. So when you take a look at the Godzilla blockets, the first thing you will notice is the water passages going in from the deck of the block up through to the thermostat house. So you can see the similarity there. But the secret to the Cleveland lies in the cylinder heads itself. The large port heads being on canted valve angles is what makes this engine deliver the goods. When you look at the Godzilla cylinder heads, this is when things really come full circle. Even though this is an inline valve cylinder head, you can see that the valves are actually on canted valve angles. What this allows for is for unshrouding of the valve as the valve actually opens because the valve is moving away from the cylinder wall, which makes more power. So there are some other facts about this engine that I think that you might find interesting. Well, first, this is actually a Y-block design and can trace its roots back to the actual Ford Y-block. Only the FE engine continued that design and was abandoned on the traditional small block, the 335 series, and the 385 series, but until the modular series came out, it went back to the Y-block design and then had cross-bolted mains like a 427 FE, but as you will see, the LS is actually a Y-block design, so who is copying who? The second interesting fact about the Godzilla engine is actually the firing order, unlike the Cleveland and the Windsor, which has the traditional 13726548, which is also shared with the Ford Modular platform, the Godzilla shares the same firing order as the Coyote and the 6.2 liter engine, which harkens back to the Ford flathead and the Ford Y-block. So it makes me wonder why Ford engineers went back to the traditional flathead Y-block firing order. If you've ever wondered why the cars sound different, this is it. Let's take a listen to two different Mustangs, one with the traditional Windsor Cleveland fire in order and the other with the Coyote and you will hear the difference. The third and final thing that I think is interesting with the Godzilla engine is the fact that it shares the same bell housing pattern as the modular platform and the 6.2 liter single overhead cam design. If you want to learn more about Cleveland's and their intricate details, I highly suggest that you go to my buddy Tim Halstead's channel, Drag Boss Garage, because I call him the Cleveland Guru. And if you want to learn more about the Godzilla engine platform, I highly suggest that you go to the Rev and Evan YouTube channel. Evan Smith working alongside of Brian Wolf and Abe have brought the Godzilla engine into the forefront and I want to give a special shout out to Brian Wolf for all of the development work that he has put into this engine as he was a Ford engineer and head of engineering department. So don't forget, check out MerchantsOfSpeed.net to get all of your vintage retro drag racing apparel and don't forget to use that code 429 to get 20 percent off off of your total order let's get back to the shop so i hope you liked the video hope you learned a little bit about the godzilla and what makes it very exceptional and um uh, yeah what do you think i want you to leave it in the comments is this closer to a cleveland or an ls you put it in the comments and let me know. So I'm excited to see what the potential is of this engine, but it's probably going to be a while because like everything else these days, it costs a lot of money to get this thing in the car, get it the way we need it. So until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. I will catch you later. It's going to be bad.